All right, here we got a nodule down at the subcutis, probably on the face, right? Big, huge sweat, um, sebaceous glands and follicles. And this tumor has a very unusual appearance, right? It's got cystic spaces, kind of some nests or islands here, this bluish, weird looking color, some purple stuff. Um, very unusual. Look closer, those cystic spaces really are true cysts lined by a layer of epithelial cells, right? If you see a white space in tissue, it's gotta be one of three things. It's either gotta be an epithelial lined space, which means it's a gland or a cyst, or it's gotta be a lymphovascular space, meaning it's lined by endothelium. So it's either lymphatic or a vessel, or it's an artifact, whether because there was lipid there that washed out, the tissue ripped or tore during processing, there was foreign body there that fell out. So that's something Dr. Rogue, and one of my great mentors that made me decide to go into academics, and he's a general surge path, but he taught so many great pearls, and that's what he said, there's three things. If there's clear white space, it's one of those three things. And so far, I've found that to be pretty true. So anyway, here we've got spaces lined by columnar epithelial cells, so true epithelial differentiation. So again, you see spaces like that, and the dermis are probably dealing with a sweat gland tumor. Always do keep metastases in mind, especially if you start seeing atypia, metastatic adenocarcinomas in the skin can mimic sweat gland tumors. Well, if you have only one stain to use to tell apart a primary sweat gland tumor from a metastatic adenocarcinoma from one of your internal organs, what would you choose? CK will stay in all of them though. CEA will, I don't even know because I don't use CA that much. It will stay in many things. The answer is P63 or P40. Okay? P63 is what's been published in our experience, P40, which is a variant uh, isoform of P63. The vast majority of primary and nexal tumors, both benign and malignant, will stain strongly in the nucleus with P63 or P40, just like basal cells and squames do. Adenocarcinomas from visceral organs tend to be negative. A small subset of lung adenos can stain with P63 and even P40 rarely, but it has been reported. But so it's real helpful. You got strong diffuse staining for one of those. That strongly argues against a met from someone's colon or stomach or, or anywhere else internally. Because again, a primary tumor of the skin, even if you think it's malignant, they're going to do an excision with a negative margin. A met from the lung, the patient has stage four cancer. Huge difference in prognosis, huge difference in everything for the patient. Okay, cystic spaces, lined by epithelial cells, nests of epithelial cells. And then what the heck's going on here? What's that? Yeah, it's cartilage, right? You can see little chondrocytes in lacuni. There's actual true cartilage right there. But the rest of it, and what I tend to see more often is this, this chondromyxoid. It's kind of myxoid, mucin, cartilage -y mixture. It's kind of a melange of all those things together, okay? So when you see obvious cartilage or even bone formation, that's awesome but I feel like that's only in a minority of cases. More often I see myxoid stroma or myxoid kind of chondroid stroma or adipocytes scattered in the background of a myxoid stroma. And then you tend to see these cells here, these kind of funny looking polygonal or epithelioid shell cells that are sitting there in the spaces out here in the chondromyxoid stuff. Sometimes they get clear, sometimes they get spindled, sometimes they make little clusters or nests like you can see kind of right here. So there's kind of an ill-defined cluster, it's not making a gland. So what kind of cells are these? Very good, what would they stain with? They do tend to stain with P63, and they the classically in myoepithelial tumors and mixed tumors, which is what this is, this is a, um, a mixed tumor, or also known as a chondroid syringoma, a name I don't like, because this does not look like syringoma at all, okay? So that name should be right out, but people still use it. Um, it doesn't look like tadpoles to me, but it, it, it's chondroid only part of the time. So anyway, mixed tumor chondroid syringoma, which is basically like the cutaneous analog to pleomorphic adenoma of the salivary glands, um, is the epithelial and myoepithelial tumor. The myoepithelial part tends to differentiate into to soft tissuey stuff like bone and cartilage and mixoid gooey backgrounds, okay? Um, if you see marked atypia, be careful for malignancy. You can have malignant myoepitheliomas or myoepithelial carcinoma arise out of these. And um, so if you see a lot of atypia, beware of that. And also do know that myopathelial cells stain with S100 strongly, and they can stain with SOX10 also. I've seen something that misdiagnosed as a melanoma that was actually a myopathelioma, soft tissue. Um, and they just did an S100 and said, and the guy got a sentinel node, it was a long time ago, but, but it can happen. So keratin and S100 co-expression is seen in almost always in myopathelial cells and myopathelial tumors. Um, in the tumors, the actin and the other myopathelial markers are less likely to be positive. So if actin's negative, doesn't matter. It's still, those are still myoaps, okay? So just know that myoepithelial tumors are kind of a hot topic because they can occur in soft tissue. They can be malignant. Chris Fletcher, Jason Hornick have published a lot about the soft tissue. It was in Christina Antonescu also. And some of them have uh, Ewing's gene rearrangements, actually. If you're ever in doubt about a gene rearrangement and anything soft tissue-y, EWS is the answer, okay? It's promiscuous. It, it partners with everything. It's, it translocates with all sorts of different genes.
All right, so there you